Bonjour, everybody. Tim Lutz in Dejanakaz. Chiogama in Dao, Miskwagami, Wazaga, Igan, Gikanu, Omada, Wigamagoons. Hello, everybody. My name is Tim Lutz. I'm the superintendent of the Red Lake School District. And thank you for joining me and allowing me to read the last chapter, chapter 20 of Mr. Popper's Penguins. We're going to find out what Mr. Popper decides to do. Is he going to join Mr. Klein in making movies with his penguins, or is he going to send his penguins with the Admiral up to the North Pole? So please join me, read along with me as we read chapter 20 of Mr. Popper's Penguins. Farewell, Mr. Popper. It was a hard decision to make. Long after the visitors had gone, Mr. and Mrs. Popper sat and discussed what was best for everybody. Mrs. Popper could see the advantages of both offers, and she pointed these out without trying to influence him. I feel that the penguins are really your responsibility, she said, and you must make up your mind. It was a pale and haggard Mr. Popper who was ready to announce his decision the next day. Mr. Klein, he said, I want you to know how much I appreciate your offer of putting my birds in the movies. But I'm afraid I have to refuse. I do not believe the life in Hollywood would be good for the penguins. Then he turned to Admiral Drake. Admiral Drake, I'm going to give you the birds. In doing this, I am considering the birds first of all. I know that they have been comfortable and happy with me. Lately, though, with the excitement and the warm weather, I've been worried about them. The birds have done so much for me that I have to do what is best for them. After all, they belong in a cold climate. And then I can't help being sorry for those men up at the North Pole without any penguins to help them pass the time. Your government will thank you, Mr. Popper, answered the Admiral. Congratulations, Admiral, said Mr. Klein. Maybe you're right at that, Popper. Hollywood might have been too much for the birds. I wish you'd let me make one short movie of them here in New York, though, before they go. Just some pictures of the sort of thing they, they do on stage, you know. We'd show the film everywhere with an announcement that these are the famous pauper penguins that are being taken to the North Pole by Admiral Drake of the United States Arctic Penguin Founding Expedition, or something like that. I'd like that very much, said Mr. Popper. We'd, we'd pay you, of course, continued Mr. Klein, not a fortune, as we could have if you'd let us give them a contract, but say $25,000. We could use it, said Mrs. Popper. It will be very quiet at 432 Proudfoot Avenue, said Mr. Popper, when everyone had left. Mrs. Popper did not answer. She knew that nothing she could say could really comfort him. However, said Mr. Popper, now that spring is here, a lot of people will be wanting their houses painted, so we'd better be getting back. Anyway, said Bill, we've had 10 whole weeks of vacation right in the middle of the year, and not many children in Stillwater can say that. The next day, the cameraman arrived to make the picture of the penguins doing their tricks. It was arranged that the poppers should stay in New York just long enough to see the expedition off. Meanwhile, in the harbor, the great sailing ship of Admiral Drake was being made ready for his long trip north. Every day, huge boxes of supplies of all sorts 
were hustled on board. The most comfortable quarters on the ship were turned over to the penguins, who were the cause of the voyage. Captain Cook, who already was quite familiar with the ship, since it was the same one the Admiral had sailed to the South Pole, where Captain Cook had often seen it. Greta, too, had seen vessels of its kind. The two of them were kept very busy, showing and explaining everything to Nelson, Columbus, Louisa, Jenny, Scott, Magellan, Adelina, Isabella, Ferdinand, and Victoria. The sailors all took the greatest delight in watching the curious little birds at their explorations. It looks as if this will be a pretty lively trip, they would say. Those pauper penguins certainly live up to their reputation. But at last, everything was ready. And the day came when the paupers were to go down and say goodbye. Bill and Janie ran all over the ship and did not want to leave when it was time to draw up the gangplank. The Admiral shook hands with them and Mrs. Popper and thanked them for having helped to train the extraordinary penguins that were to be a real contribution to science. Mr. Popper had gone down below to say a private farewell to his birds. All that kept him from breaking down completely was the knowledge that what he was doing was best for them, too. First, he said goodbye to all the younger penguins, then to Greta, who had saved Captain Cook. Then, last of all, he leaned over and said a special goodbye to Captain Cook, who had come and made life so different for Mr. Popper. Then he wiped his eyes straightened his back, and went up on deck to say goodbye to Admiral Drake. Goodbye, Admiral Drake, he said. Goodbye, repeated the Admiral. What, what do you mean? Aren't you coming with us? Me? Go with you to the North Pole? Why, of course, Mr. Popper. But how could I go with you? I'm not an explorer or a scientist. I'm only a house painter. You're the keeper of the penguins, aren't you? Roared the Admiral. Man alive, aren't those penguins the reason for this whole expedition? And who's going to see that they're well and happy if you're not along? Go put on one of those fur suits like the rest of us. We're pulling anchor in a minute. Mama! shouted Mr. Popper to Mrs. Popper, who had already gone up the gangplank. I'm going too. I'm going too. Admiral Drake says he needs me, Mama. Do you mind if I don't come home for a year or two? Oh, as to that, said Mrs. Popper, I'll miss you very much, my dear. But we have money to live on for a few years and in winter it will be much easier to keep the house tidy without a man sitting around all day. I'll be getting back to Stillwater. Tomorrow is the day for the meeting of the Ladies' Aid and Missionary Society, and I'll be just in time. So goodbye, my love, and good luck. Goodbye and good luck, echoed the children. and the penguins. Hearing their voices scuttled up on deck and stood there beside the Admiral and Mr. Popper. Then they solemnly lifted their flippers and waved as the great ship moved slowly down the river towards the sea. And that is the end of Mr. Popper's Penguins. Thank you for joining in on the reading of this book.